I'm having this conversation with a friend and he's telling me, yo, listen, I have all these contacts in Ivory Coast and in Kinshasa and in Cameroon, da, 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 da. We're making things happen. Yo, listen, we have to do a tour for the new album. We have to do this. We have to do that. And I'm like, I'm not interested in performing. And he's like, what? But you have a new album, blah, blah. I said, bro, listen. I'm 48. I started performing when I was 17. And I performed for free from 1992 until 1996. And then I started getting a little bit of money. And then I released my first album in 1998. And then it'd be after be, being the dancer of Jean-Michel Rotin, I start being my own person. And I started doing my own show, having my own dancers and touring all around the world. I've been around the world 20, 30 times. I've been in every country possible. I've, I've seen everything that had to be seen. I enjoyed every part and hated every part of fame. I made all the money that had to be made from performing. And I don't mind watching the younger generation the people that are after me walk the, the path that I paved and that I helped pave with the rest of my peers of my generation. No, but you did it. And I had to tell him, listen, imagine you built a building and that building has 10 floors and from floor 10 to floor 5 there's apartments and from floor 4 to floor 1 there's offices and on floor 0 you have a restaurant, you have two restaurants and some shops, maybe a grocery. And then on floor minus zero, you have a minus one, you have a club, you have a nightclub. And then minus two to minus four, you have a parking lot. And all of this is generating money. And all of this is generating a lot of money let's say your building is generating after all expenses your building is generating 100k per month and i come or or and so this guy who was talking to when i met him i was 22 and he was 26 and he was a, a promoter, a club promoter. He worked for a club in France called Le Macumba and uh, in north of France. And he was the, yeah, the director of the club and he was doing his own parties. And so he would hire us to come perform there and he would get paid by the club. Maybe he won, I don't know, 3000 per month, whatever. And Urban Sweet Spot, what up? And imagine that the owner of that club from back in the days comes to you and tells you hey you have to come back to the club i'll pay you five thousand per month you need to run the club again just like old times just like in 1996 What would you say? And he's like, I would laugh at his face. <laughs> and I replied to him. So let me laugh at your face. Because to me, the things you are telling me about going to, to perform is, is laughable. Because for the last 25 years, I've been building my building. 
I've been generating money from the next thing. Because me, the question I ask myself when I'm successful is always, what am I doing next? It's never, oh my God, let me enjoy. Let me enjoy. Let me enjoy until, you know, you you have this huge lemon and it's full of juice. So you're like, oh my God, lemonade, amazing, amazing, amazing. But then the juice is starting to rarefy itself. So instead of thinking, okay, what am I doing after this one? You're like, nah, let me press more to have more juice. And then maybe it's just dropped. So you're like. And then when the fruit is completely dry, you're like. Oh, shit, I'm 50 years old. I don't know what to do. I didn't learn nothing else. I didn't put space in my mind for the next thing. And we started having this conversation yesterday when I was telling him. The problem of a lot of artists is not always that they don't have ideas of the future. Is that entourage is preventing them to become the next version of themselves. A lot of times, people want you to be Keisha on Dikwa, Keisha One Love, Keisha Question My Heart. Keisha Diamonds, Keisha the producer, Keisha the singer, Keisha the rapper, Keisha the performer, because that's where they're comfortable seeing you. They don't imagine that you can be Keisha the painter. They don't imagine that you could be Keisha the entrepreneur, or maybe the, the restaurant owner, or maybe the, the, the investor, or, or that you could be in cryptocurrencies, DeFi, et cetera, et cetera, or you, you, are, you own a catalog that's big enough that you don't need to go do these shows. And I was explaining to him, the question is not, did I stop loving performing? I will always love performing. But I performed thousands of times in my life in more countries that I ever dreamed of. I performed in places. I was like, wait, I'm, I'm performing here? Like, wait, I'm in Ukraine? And there's like a, a full public of Ukrainians and Russians. There's not a, there's not a black person here. And they all know the lyrics. And they're all dancing Kizomba, Kizomba in Ukraine. And I'm part of the reason of this. Of this whole movement, I'm I'm one of the one of the, the moving parts that made this happen. This internationalization of of music, I'm, I'm I'm I've been in there, and I'm like wow. And so many artists that I know got stuck in performing and stuck in loving the idea of being famous that they forgot that these two can be a thing of the past you can be a dancer you can be a singer you can be a, a producer you can whatever you are you always have to ask yourself is it time to move on to the next thing and if it's time to move on to the next thing if you feel, if your heart is filled with the love for whatever you're doing right now, or you're doing in the, you were doing in the past, you will not make space for what is next for you, because you will be obsessed with the idea of what you were, and because you're obsessed with the idea of I was this. Oh, I was a superstar or I am a superstar da, da, da. you're gonna start going in the territory of being pissed about people not giving you your flowers people not recognizing you in the street people not calling you to do shows people paying younger people more than you etc 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 because you didn't decide 
inside of, 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 of your heart, it's time to move on to the next thing. And I was explaining on the phone to that friend, I was like, listen, how old was I when you met me? It was like you were 22. And I was like, okay, okay. What was I doing? It was like, oh, you were, uh, you were a dancer and a rapper for Jean-Michel Rotin. I said, okay, what year was that? He's like 96. I said, okay. He was like, hey, I, for I cannot forget. I booked one of your first show as an artist, as a solo act. I booked your first show. I remember paying you your hotel room to stay another night because you liked that girl back in 96. I said, exactly. And I said, how old are you now? And he was like, I'm 54. I'm like, and me, how old am I now? And he's like, you're 48. I was like, you really think that this kid that you met in 96 at 22, who was, who would do anything to sing because I was really thirsty for the mic. You think that after performing around the world 20 times, everywhere in all the countries that I've, I ever been dreamed of, plus those that I didn't even, even know existed back then. Do you really think that I'm still thirsty for that? And I had to remind him in 2003, when On Di comes out and it becomes the biggest song in French speaking Africa, plus France and still is today, uh, one of the and, and, and One Love and Music Warrior and Question and all my songs, they're just part of culture now. But all those songs have 20 years. When those songs are exploding and I'm exploding as, a, as an artist again, I'm also producing the albums of Sumia, Elisio, ABG, and I'm already making more money from production than from being an artist. And I'm already realizing that as an artist, you get paid when people call you. For example, hey, Tanya, here's somebody who paid me to go to London. At that point, you know, at that point, thanks, Julie. At that point, when, let's say, let's say, you get hired to perform four times in a week and it's every show you make a thousand um so you get let's say you make four shows every week that's for sure one in london one in uh, peterborough one in lisbon and one in paris boom that's a month next month you're gonna do one in Kinshasa, another one in Switzerland somewhere, another one in, uh, in, in, in Bordeaux, south of France, and another one in another place, another four show. So you make four shows, that's 4,000. And let's say for whatever reason, the next month, one show get canceled because of the weather, another show get canceled because of strikes, and the other two weeks, there's no show because nobody thought of you. Now, uh, if, you, if you didn't spend the money from the last two months, you pay your rent and you're like, yo. But if you already spend your money on invested in something or just spent it on bullshit, whatever, your lifestyle, that's when you start realizing, oh shit, that show money is not consistent. It comes and it goes. Sometimes you make money a lot. Sometimes you don't. And let's say at the same time, you sold 50,000 albums from Lizio, ABG, yourself, da, 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 you, sell, you sold 50,000 albums. And you realize that, yo, I just generated 500K from CDs. I would need to do 500 shows to make that money. Oh shit. Even when you split in two with your partner, you still have 250K. And you're like, hmm. So this is me in 2003. 
So as I'm generating money from writing for me, writing for other people, producing for me, producing for Nelson Freitas, Deeper, Rebound Chick, Mes Sentiments for Sumia, uh, Melodia for Elysio, Mika Mendes track, Looney Johnson. As I'm creating this whole empire, I am also performing all around the world. But in my head, I'm already like, yo, the real money is not in performing. So I'm going to continue creating this and generating an amount of catalog. So I'm building. So let's go back to the building things. I'm metaphor metaphorically, I'm building my building. So I'm building the underground parking. I'm building all the things slowly, slowly. When we arrive in 2010, I said to myself, yo, listen, I'm making a thousand every month from YouTube and I'll probably make 2000 every month from streaming because streaming is a thing now we're starting. So it's like, it's still 60% Spotify and they're still streaming. And I'm like, yo, what I want to do in the future is make more money from the content then make more then make money from the shows and then by when i moved to portugal from 2012 till 2000 probably 17 18 i go crazy on the content vlogs uh, inspire videos etc etc and then the the revenue it's something that i've lived a lot of times in my life when I see the revenue from one business starting to go down, but at the same time, I see the revenue from another business starting to go up. Four years ago, I started writing, four or five years ago, I started writing for Blaya, I started writing for Anselmo Ralph, I started writing for, I started writing for uh, Rita Guerra, for a lot of artists in Portugal. And because of that, the, the money that they generate every time they do shows, every time they, they the, the, the songs go in novellas, etc., etc. This money is going up as well. When they, when they, when the songs that I wrote or co-wrote end up in movies, my money goes up as well. And now I have all these songs that I did, all the songs that I do every Friday. It's not just to generate songs like crazy. It's also to build a catalog that is bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Because the bigger it is, the more it generates every day. If, like, every time you play, you play a song on Spotify, I get 0, 0.00 something. But if you, have, you now have a million time people putting play in all around the world, especially now that Spotify and all those platforms, they're in Africa now, they're all around the world, so all around the world, you're generating a little bit of money. So at a point, I explained to him, I took the time to clear my mind from performing, from producing other artists so that I could open myself to new, exciting things. And because I don't have any I'm not scared at all to let the past behind me. It doesn't matter. Like what is done is done. Staying there will not help you. You have to look at there for guidance, for for uh, experience of the things that work, the things that didn't work, the things that might work again, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is what the past is for. So when you are when you are moving forward, you're not looking there. You're looking there. So. At a point, I ask him, "Listen, if I make a if I make a thousand per show, or two thousand, whatever the the, the 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 price of a show, but let's simplify. If I make a thousand per show, what like once you have like, even listen, some what people don't know. Sometimes even you, if your show costs two thousand, three thousand, five thousand, once you paid everybody, once you pay your band, your DJ, or your dancers, or your and your management, and all the people that are." Part of the whole the whole price right 
Maybe in the end, you only have a thousand for you. Maybe your show costs to produce 5,000 and you sell it for 6,000. And once you have paid, let's say it's a live show, you paid your drummer, your guitarist, the thing, the linebackers, the, the two people who come with you, your DJs, these, these. Once you've paid for everything, maybe there's a thousand for you left, right? So I was telling him, let's simplify and say that I make a thousand. I used to make a thousand per show back in the days. And I was making a lot of shows. Let's say, let's say I was making four shows a month when it was a good good time, maybe sometimes eight when it was an amazing month. But let's simplify to four shows a month, right? I just did an NFT drop with crypto.com and I sold out in 38 minutes, generating from my paintings $100,000 in 38 minutes how many times do i have to take the train the plane pack my suitcase go in a plane or, or and hurt my back then go in a, then then go in a car maybe do another one hour of road to arrive in a hotel hope the hotel is good and they're not trying to put me in a shitty hotel then i have to change hotels all that shit then uh, uh go dinner try to sleep be awakened at 2 a.m being uh, tired more and more tired and then you go to perform at 3 a.m then hopefully it's a good show after the show you have to do photos with everybody smile etc do some autograph talk to people between photos somebody wants to tell you their story maybe but you like i'm so sorry there's another hundred people waiting to tell me their story as well etc etc it's amazing i'm happy to be here but we have to keep it moving. You have to do this to generate a hundred thousand. You have to do this a hundred times. You have to take a hundred plane coming and another hundred plane coming back. Even if it's one hour to go to Paris or two hours to go to Holland or eight hours to go to Kinshasa or nine hours to go to Miami. You have to do this a hundred times so you have to take the plane 200 times and it hurts your back to make a hundred k and i told him because i took the time this last four or five years and especially during the pandemic i took the time to clear my heart from who i have been so I could be what I'm becoming. I was able to generate the money of a hundred travels in 38 minutes. And if I, if I didn't take the time to clear my head from that, I would be too busy trying to find shows. Like I see everybody since the pandemic ended, they are all trying to find shows because that's all they have. That's all they know how to do. And I'm sad for them because I'm really thankful because thanks to you guys, just this YouTube channel generates the amount that I need for shows to do every month, just because of all these hours that we've been talking online. Now this channel can pay me four months of rent every month or and, and, and instead of just spending this money on stupid things, I'm reinvesting it in either the show or in cryptocurrencies in, 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 the, in the future. That's the way I am. And I ended my conversation with him telling him when you are telling me that you want to do a tour and it would be great to do a tour and blah, 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 blah. And, Maybe we can do a show, maybe ask like 2,000 or 3,000 per show. I was telling him it's insulting because I make way more money than that today sitting down in my sofa and I would stand up, leave my house. Yeah, if you give me 10K or whatever, but it's not a question of money. I would, I would stand up and leave my house and be excited if you propose me something new. 
let's go shoot a movie let's do this let's let's go talk business with people about stuff that you are really interested in today and what is insulting to me is not the fact that people are trying to make money with you and do the things you love i love performing what is insulting is the fact that people still want to see you as your 22 to 26 year old self and they refuse to see you as your 48 old father husband that you are today i want to see listen i lost all the years of my son i assume it it it, it was heartbreaking every time i would leave but i had to do it i had to do it i had to go see the fans i had to go and build for him for the future just like i've seen my father leave all the time and he was breaking my heart all the time and i would only see him after two months because politics and i've lived with that i've only known that so i i don't even think it's not normal because i've i've only known that right but i was saying to myself when i have my kid i will not i will stay with them i want i want to i want them to to grow up and they see me every day when they wake up and you know what I ended up happening? I had a kid and I had no money. And I was like, what am I gonna do? And then I had a hit. So I had to feed my family. And to feed my family, I had to go to see galas in in, uh, in, in, in Atlanta, or in uh, I had to go to Club Tantric in Rhode Island. I had to go to Cameroon. I had to go to, to Congo. I had to go to Japan. I had to go to, to Portugal, to Algarve. I had, I had to go all around the world. I had to spend two months in, in Martinique, Guadeloupe, Guyane performing so I could come back and feed my family. And I would just have my, phone, my son on the phone. And at that time, there was no WhatsApp. So you could not stay five hours on the phone with them. You could not just put the video and just stay there and chat. You had to just be on the phone and you had to pay attention because every minute would cost five euros. That was 2003. And but you had to do it. And, and I would, yeah, I would take the train, go to Belgium and spend a weekend. And then I would see him being in despair you know trying not to cry when he was two years old because i had to go and i had to take back my train and yeah you know it was heartbreaking taking the taxi going back to the train station trying not to cry and then the next day i was in a plane going somewhere but i was building and in the end it's a sacrifice for him it's a sacrifice for me Today is 19, he's a great kid, he's, he's happy, but I can see that every time there's a holiday and his mom says, hey, let's go somewhere, let's do something. He's like, no, I want to go to my dad's. So I know that there's a lot of, of missing, right? And when my daughter was born, I said to myself, nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna not I'm not going to lose the first step. I'm not going to lose the first this. I'm not going to lose the first hearing papa on the phone. I want to I want to see everything. I want to leave it. And this is why I didn't have kids between this is why there was 15 be between the between the two of them. Is because it was a it was a it was heartbreaking for me too as a father. Listen, I was there. But you know, coming and going. And at the same I mean my father too, always coming and going, but same thing. My father came from nothing. So when he had something, he would he wanted to be sure that we would have everything. But maybe all we wanted was to be there. And when my when my daughter was born, oh listen, I was just done traveling. I was done traveling because I wanted to go take her to school every day. I wanted to and I didn't want to say to myself, like when I, I see a lot of artists from my age, 
they cannot take their kid to school because they have to go outside and try to find money because they didn't think about what ne what's next 20 years ago. I'm so fortunate that if I don't perform for the next one year, I will still generate more money than back then when I was performing two, three times a week. Today, listen, uh, with this iPad and this Apple Pen, I draw some drawings and luckily people love my art. And in 38 minutes, I made more money than two years of shows in 38 minutes. And you know what I'm going to do with this money? I'm going to invest 80% of it. The rest of the 20%, I'm going to pay my son's school for the year. I'm going to pay my daughter's school for the year. I'm going to offer my, my wife a bag because that's what you woman wants. And I will buy myself maybe an iPhone or maybe a new computer because this is what I like. And the rest, I'm going to invest it to make it grow so that maybe I can make the money of 10 years of shows from one of those investments. Because that's how I think. And imagine that you're thinking all these things in your head of, this is my next move, this is my next move, this is my next move, this is my move for 2030. And some nigga come and say, yo, let's do what we used to do in 1996. And you're like, nigga. This is not what's next for me. And yeah, listen, when you have my brain, it's impossible to think the way most other people think because a lot of people, they believe they're in the now, but they actually are in the yesterday. And me on the now, I'm just thinking about, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the present, but I'm always trying to be 10 steps ahead in terms of where I'm going to move next. And, and, and I'm not excited by the successes of today. To me, you know, like when I do a song, like, listen, my album's coming out. I'm going to be super excited on the day of the release because it's going to be my 10th album. But a week after my album comes out, I have a single coming out. And I'm going to do a release party for the single. And then the week after I have a remix single, I'm going to do another release, a release a party for that single with all my remixes and I'm just going to continue just pushing new re new tracks that are for album number 11 because that's the way I am and this is what saved me during the pandemic the fact that I started this show listen and we tell my YouTube channel generates four rents plus the rent of the my streaming listen even with the NFT money, even if I don't touch it, my rent is paid for a year already. Like all this is the is the is the res the result of thinking ahead and always asking yourself, what's next? Like, what am I doing next? And how am I using this money? And and I was I was telling my friend, listen, I would urge you to start building your building so that you don't have to try to, to make me go perform here and there because I'm not going to do it unless you pay me a lot of money because I now need... So um, Kendrick said something interesting earlier. He said, uh, you have fuck you money now. It's not because of the fuck you money, actually. It's because going to perform is taking me away from what I'm doing now for tomorrow. And if you want me to perform, you're going to have to pay me for my time. It's not the fact that I don't like performing. It's just that I don't have time to perform. So you really want me to go perform? Yeah, listen, it's going to be 10K because... Um, I need, I'm going to need to leave what I'm doing, leave what I'm building. I'm not going to be able to work on this show, which is the future of my money. This is what I'm doing right now. When I arrive at episode, episode 1000 and there's 
hundreds of thousands of people in the chat, in the comments, and, and it just becomes a cultural thing, you will come back to this video and you will be like, yo, but if I have to leave my house for one, two, three, four, five days, go perform, come back, unpack my, my etc. And so it disrupts your flow. People have to pay for this plus money. That's it. And the beautiful thing about it is having enough money to say no is a beautiful thing. Not because you can be like, hey, I do what I want. No, that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is just being able to go to the next phase is super important. And it's like, like I said, you buy your freedom because once you get in this thing of performing in clubs and doing all these, these shows and stuff, it's like a prison because if you don't have a hit, then they don't call you. And when you have a, when you have a hit, they call you, but they're trying to, they always like, and then, yeah, you, you get stuck in this, you, you, you like it, it's, it's easy money, so you do a lot of them, and then one day, you like, 20 years passed, and yeah, some new kids arrive, and they replace you, and even the people who are supposed to hire you, they're gonna do something else, and the new people who, are, who own the club, or who are the promoters, are kids as well, and maybe they don't know you, or maybe they know you, but they see you like the uncles, you see what I mean? When your songs are 20 years old, they're 20 years old. If the kids in the club are 18, yeah, it's not your time anymore. It's the time of the kids. So you have to move. You have to move. You have to get moving. Like life is life is a river. So you have you cannot be in the same water twice. So you have to move. Yeah, it is what it is. K is a real king. Thank you so much.